In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the basic workflow for shading, lighting and rendering a scene in Mentorcore. Currently we have a default shader assigned to everything, and two lights have already set up. A spotlight for directionality, and a point light to provide a specular highlight on the floor. Let's render the scene. The first thing we need to do is open the Render Globals, enable Mentorcore. Since I'm using a linear workflow, I also want to enable colour management. Now let's assign some shaders. I've already set up some materials, so let's take a look at the floor first. For the shader, I'm using a core material. And when you're using Mender Core, you need to assign one of the material shaders to the objects, excluding the two subsurface shaders. In the shader, I'm using Blend for specular highlights and I have reflections enabled. You'll also note that I'm using Mentoray textures as opposed to my file nodes. You're free to use either, but I prefer the combination of Mentoray textures and the core texture on a lookup node. Let's assign a floor shader and do another render. Now let's take a look at the middle ball. For this shader, I'm using a core blend materials to blend between two different shaders. I'm using a texture map as a blend amount to create a chipped paint effect. For the base material, I'm using a core material, and this is the underlying metal. For the coat material, I'm using a core car paint. Let's assign the shader and have a look. You can see how the blend materials is blending between the car paint and the underlying metal to create the chipped paint effect. Finally we need to set up the glowing parts of the sphere. For this shader I'm using a core material with the MIA light surface shader plugged into incandescence. Let's see what that looks like. Now that I have some shaders assigned, let's take a look at creating an environment for reflections. Under the Options tab, create a core environment. And attach a spherical map to the texture input. Since I'm using an HDR file, I need to set the color profile to linear. You can see now we're getting some reflections on our sphere. Next, I'm going to enable the global environment light to add some indirect lighting. I'm also going to enable ambient inclusion. This will provide shadowing for that global environment light. Now we have some indirect lighting, most noticeable in the shadows. The environment light generates ambient light from our environment that I made earlier. It's a lot faster than using Final Gather, and combined with ambient occlusion gives you some good results. Now I want to make some glow from the light in the object. To do this I'm going to use Final Gather. However, I'm also going to go back to the core environment that I made under the Final Gather environment. I'm going to disable the environment. This means that Final Gather won't create light from the environment, as I'm already using the environment light to do that. And finally, I'm going to create a photographic lens. This is going to allow me to add some venusing to the scene. Since the vignetting darkens the scene, I'm going to increase the brightness to compensate. The photographic lens has also applied tone mapping to the scene, so the bright specular highlight no longer looks unnatural. Now that I'm happy with the render, I'm going to go into the Render Passes tab and make some render passes. You can select them from the list on the left, 
and press the double arrow to the right to create them. Press the double arrow to the left to delete them. In this case, I'm going to instead use a preset. And remove the passes I don't want. Once you've created your passes, you need to assign them to the render layer. Select them in the Scene Passes list and add to render layer. Now I'm going to Batch Render and jump into New to Composite. Now that we have our image rendered out in passes, we can composite it together. For this example, I'm going to use Nuke, but any compositing application will do the trick. Since I rendered to an EXR file, all the passes are contained in the one file. First, I'm going to start with the diffuse. Next, to composite the shadows in, create a merge node, set the operation to difference, and we'll use the shadow pass. This allows you to mix in and out the amount of shadows. Next, we'll add in our ambient light, which is the core environment light. followed by specular reflection indirect which is final gather Finally, incandescence. Once composited, you can now control elements such as the amount of specular or reflections.